Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. And in today's video, we're going to focus in on an area in chapter 16. Yes, the last chapter in the textbook. Um, it's the business chapter. And uh, for some folks, it's just not you know, the highest priority chapter. And it's not, it's not that heavily represented on the exam. But, you know, we always say this, if you've got the time, you got to go through the entire textbook because you don't want to fail by one question, two questions that came from a chapter that you didn't read because you didn't think it was important. And it's not that it's not an important chapter. There are certain specific areas that for sure um, ACE is going to grab some questions from if you ever uh, go through and peruse some of the practice exams that are available out on the uh, internet from different companies uh, and ours as well for Body Design University. We try to ensure that the questions that are coming out are, are represented in the same sort of specific percentages as you're going to see in the textbook from the particular domains. Chapter 16 is not what we call the highest priority chapter, okay? It's not, right? But you look, there, there might be five questions from chapter. There might be anywhere from five to 10 questions from chapter 16. It just depends. They might have two questions from chapter 16. So I wanted to go over it because it is um, an area of contention for a lot of folks when they get some of these questions. On the Facebook group, there was a uh, somebody had posted pretty much a class. It's like a classic question from chapter 16 about equipment usage. So if you see a piece of equipment that is not functioning correctly or broken, what do you do? Right. And then it gives you four answers. And I want to show you because I'm going to I'll pull up the uh, the textbook here and kind of give you an idea. Um, do two things. Number one, show you where the particular answer to that question is found. It's pretty straightforward, of course, like any of these questions. Once you see what the right answer is, right, duh, it makes sense. Quite often when it comes to uh, issues related to equipment, uh, we we kind of go by our own sort of intuitive nature. I'm a weightlifter, I'm in a club, I'm working out, or I'm a trainer in a club. I see cables are frayed. I see frayed cables all the time. Okay, it ain't that big of a deal, right? So intuitively, I'm thinking, that's not that big of a deal. I might just let them know up front, right, uh, at, the, at the front desk, right? Er, no, that's not the right thing to do from a purely ethical perspective. That frayed cable, and by the way, I've seen this, I've seen it happen, frayed cables, snapping under heavy loads you got to get that piece of equipment out of service get it out of service either get it out or if it's too big you know disable it um just real quick you know there might be a, a screw or something that can disable the equipment entirely um again wrapping something around it or putting a sign up only goes so far. And those are all the answers that you see in these type of questions. Okay. So again, I'm honing in, in chapter 16 on this one area. And I'm going to show you the specific, because again, in this Facebook post that was, that was done, the, the individual actually put up the question and quite often folks get this wrong. And I, I understand why, but I want to get you right to that very spot. And it's on page let me get over here, not page 762. It's on page 765. You see this area right here where it says equipment. If you haven't gotten to this chapter, if you're still in the earlier chapters, don't worry about it. You know, on, on our Facebook, make sure that, by the way, make sure you subscribe to the Facebook page, okay? Once you go into the Facebook page, you're going to be able to see all these videos anyway. Um, you'll be able to access this one. So on uh, on page 765, here is the answer to the question right here. A uh, particular concern is the protocol utilized when broken equipment is discovered. There it is. They're going to tell you something is unsafe. Immediately remove the equipment from the training area. If you can't do that, disable it. That's your answer. It's the answer to the question. Just keep in mind that like most questions that are asked, um, on the ACE exam related to chapter 16, like most of those questions, there is like a very specific uh, context area in this chapter where you can find the answer. One of the reasons why chapter 16 is a little bit challenging is because, and let me do this. I'm going to 
Those of you understand the functionality of this, right? So here I am at the beginning of the chapter. Okay, real quick, as an aside, when you're studying chapter 16, just like when you're studying all the other chapters, the way I do it is I, I go right up front. Thank you, Ace, for doing this. Okay, they gave you a real easy visual. I simply take the um, the sub the subheading business structure, and that becomes a single page of my read, write, recite methodology. So business structure, and another page, independent contractors versus employees. And I, I basically take, you know, I eat the elephant one bite at a time. And then you're going to get obviously to um, other, other issues here. So the legal responsibility areas, right? Facilities, equipment, supervision, and function. That's basically where you're going to be looking. So just that was just as an aside to help you with the chapter itself. Take a little bit at a time, try and go through it, and uh, you'll be able to memorize the necessary parts of it. Here's the other, another tip, okay, is as, and I'm just moving through it. You'll notice, why is it challenging? Because it's all text. It's all text. It's all wording. That's it. There's no pretty pictures. Well, I mean, you got a picture here, but it's all written material. How do you dis how do you deal with this? If you're not a visual reading type of learner, how do you deal with this? Right? Because as soon as you start reading this, what happens? You start to do this. Right. And you just lose total focus. Well, one of the things that you can do is once you're going through the materials, you start to hone in on specific words, concepts. They have already given you some areas to focus on in bold. Okay, so that's a hint right off the bat. No, most of this is not important. I, you know, I'm with you on that. Um, but what I would do is first look at the bolded areas, right? And then as you're reading, just make sure you're looking at specific words or concepts that perhaps even stick out to you. It's a lot easier for a reading visual type of person to, to figure this out. For the most part, um, I would say, don't be highlighting this. Don't highlight a whole lot of information on here. That means that you're just reading the material. Reading is not studying. It's not going to give you a whole lot of retention. Uh, when all is said and done, I would say go ahead and do the perusal, read through the material. Uh, again, here you have the, the key concept or term or phrase already in bold. That's where I would be focusing my time and effort. Corporations, I'm just going to move through this with you here again, chapter 16. Okay, you got tables. That's basically where you're going to focus your time, advantages, disadvantages. But here's the thing. When you get to, and I'm always looking for bullet points. That's the editor, the writer. That's the way, that's their way of saying, uh, there's a whole lot more to this, but I'm going to compress it for you into bullet points. And when you get to a table like this, what do you do? You can rewrite the entire table. I don't recommend that, right? Anytime you see bullet points, tables that have, literal sentences, make it or rewrite it. You still got to rewrite it, but rewrite it and compress it down into a vocabulary that works for you. I can probably get this sentence into, you know, three or four words in a way that I can remember, memorize it well enough to where when I see a question related to the advantages of owning, operating a franchise, because you might get a question on that. What's one of the benefits or all of the following are benefits of owning a franchise, except, and you see questions like that <clears throat> quite often on the ACE exam. They are notorious for that. So you try to compress it down into a couple of words for memorization purposes. Let me get you back um, now to, <clears throat> to what we were talking about. As far as the equipment, <clears throat> okay, excuse me. So now we're back here at the equipment part of it. If you did not read through it, it's going to be a challenge then to answer the questions that, that I was just talking about. Once you get to these type of areas, a little tip is to look and ask yourself a question. Are they giving you a very definitive way of dealing with an issue or concern? Let me say that again. <clears throat> Are they giving you a very definitive way? Do this, don't do this. What are they telling you? This is very definitive, very precise. Once something is deemed unsafe, should immediately remove the equipment. You'll find that quite a bit through the um, through this process, okay? So as you're going through it, just keep in mind, 
the goal here is to memorize material, understand the material enough to where you can navigate the proper questions. When the question is related to like we were just talking about with equipment that's broken, what do you do? It's always, and by the way, one of the, one of the students responded with a very good, <clears throat> very good answer or, or reply to the post, <clears throat> which was that, as you saw in that, in that area, when all is said and done, what ACE wants you to remember from an ethical perspective <clears throat> is that you want to make sure that that thing is not usable. You don't want it usable. Like they say, if you put a sign up, sign can fall off. If you tell everybody around it, hey, guys, just so you know, this is this piece of equipment looks like it's frayed. You may not want to use it. Well, that's not going to work for everybody. They're basically telling you for the safety, the ultimate safety component <clears throat> here will will probably uh, be based on the ability to disable the machine. It's a very specific question, very specific area of the textbook, very specific part of that chapter that I wanted to go over with you. Now, remember, as I said, subscribe to the channel. OK, our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so you know when all the new new material is coming out. Um, if you have not done so already, go to our Facebook page. We have a private study group just for just for ACE uh, students that are getting prepped for the ACE exam. And there's lots of help in there as well. As always, if you have questions or comments, please leave them below in this particular video. Check out all the other videos. I mean, we have a ton of them out there. It's all designed to basically do one thing help you to pass your ACE exam. That's what we do here at Body Design University, at least one of the things that we do. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Thanks.